Yo! <laughs> Yo, the jacket though. The jacket with three buckles. <laughs> Hi, you're watching Black by Reality, a place for Black by Baddies and those who love us. I'm Nicole Weaver, and once again, we're covering And Just Like That, episode seven. But before that, please like and subscribe to Black by Reality on YouTube or in the podcast apps. Uh, we're also across social, so check us out there. Some of our clips will be there, maybe some um, edited out clips. So I, I think they're always so funny. So catch us on social media. And um, if you are listening to us on the podcast apps, still check out our YouTube channel. There is a YouTube exclusive series called TV to Table, where I cook recipes with my partner, Jordan, um, recipes that are inspired from TV scenes. Uh, the upcoming one, we're doing Bukhtini. Yeah. <laughs> Inspired by the bear. So, um, yeah, catch that on Fridays. Now, to cover episode seven, here is my co host, Arami Day. I've Hi. returned. You have returned. I mean, we had a big return in this episode. So, yes, we did. What, what's the first big thoughts, big thoughts we got going on? So I was so with this episode, right? Like, I was like, this feels familiar. This feels like Sex in the City, like, origin. And mm -hmm. then it went off the rails. <laughs> like, why is this the theme of the episode of things going completely off the rail? Um, I have so many thoughts because I actually really enjoyed this episode more than, I think this is my favorite so far. Um, despite the chaotic ending, which we'll get to. Mm -hmm. uh, but I have some real thoughts about a lot of things. A lot okay, of things. okay. I don't know if it's my favorite episode. Ooh, that's actually a really good question. Something we should do for the last, um, or maybe like we do one episode just looking back at the whole season. Um, but it's it's definitely probably the most comedic leading. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, we got the dust settled on a lot of the big things that the fandom didn't like. Um, so now we can play a little bit and it it feels playful in most of the storylines. The stakes are pretty low, which yeah. is nice. <laughs> um, all right, to get started with how with this episode, we open with Carrie opening her email. It's the the how they use music and sound is wild because it's very it's, gen x it's, so <laughs> gen <laughs> it's just like light fluffy music and then the minute she sees aiden respond it she slams it we hear new york like cars and stuff and it's just like back to reality um i'm glad that we didn't get a whole episode of her just like wringing her hands over opening this because I I saw it the minute that happened I was like this is where we're going but I'm so happy that the next scene we get her talking about it with Miranda and Charlotte definitely I love this um I'm glad that Aiden responded so she didn't humiliate herself and like I'm glad it wasn't like you said either some long drawn out process where she was awaiting a response or she was just like terrified. Mm -hmm. um, and she responds, you don't see what her actual response is, but she tells Miranda and Charlotte that they've um, decided to meet, meet for dinner, which happens to be Valentine's Day. So of course this sends Charlotte into a complete Charlotte spiral. <laughs> I'm actually with her on this because who in their right mind, the stakes are already, you just made them higher. You haven't talked in years. You haven't seen each other in years. And the first time you're going to do this is on Valentine's Day. It's a lot. And I know that, you know, every place is different, whether you live in a small town or a big city. But New York Valentine's is very chaotic. Like, I'm talking about if you want to get a reservation, you need to have done that in October. Yeah. <laughs> or anywhere that's decent. It's, like, crazy. It to is. To try and, like, and it's very obvious it's a type of thing where you can't, it's like Mother's Day. Like you can't hide from Valentine's Day in New York. Like yeah. You just can't. Yeah, definitely. Um, so yeah, he invited her to dinner. Um, and we also get an update on Miranda. So Mar Miranda's, Miranda has a big, um, interesting question for herself. 
because Charlotte is like, oh, are you back there, out there, like, looking for a woman? And she's like, who says it has to be a woman? Like, Che was non-binary. That doesn't really place you in anything with sexuality. Um, so, yeah, there's a big question. Where does Miranda fall into the LGBTQ if she's even in the LGBTQ? Um yeah i love this too for miranda i feel like she's been in such a non-miranda state for the past season and a half and it was so frustrating because she's one of my favorite characters of all time like on television just because she doesn't play that so to see her get back to herself in a way that it's like okay like i'm very analytical let me figure my shit out which is something she should have done before she met jackie um (laughs) But I'm also glad she's not pining over them. And she came to the conclusion that, like, what they had is what they had. Hopefully, Mm -hmm. Lord, please, please don't uh, make us do this again. But what they had is what they had. But she could also have something special with someone Mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. That's not Che. That's not Steve. Like, her person, you know, whether it's a person for a number of years or for a number of months, is still out there. And I think that's... An exciting thing about being single and it's not often talked about. Okay, so Naya, Naya has been in her single girl era. And we see her black married friends over Zoom, maybe, and they're like worried about her. It's her first Valentine's Day. Um, single, and she just says, I'm gonna have a me evening. Like, don't you worry about it. And she reminds her girlfriends, like, you actually can't be with me on that day to support because you guys got husbands definitely i wish they would have done a galentine's day thing but it was it it was nice to see that naya who is a black woman that would have black friends does have Mm -hmm. these black friends um and i also loved her being like listen like i've had a thousand valentine's day with this man this is for me. Like she wants to make this beautiful chocolate souffle for herself. And it's something I've always encouraged myself when I've been single or like my girlfriends or film friends to do. Mm-hmm. It's like do something for yourself on Valentine's Day. Even if you have a partner and you can't work out what to do with them on that day, get a mani-pedi if it's something that you like. Get a spa or a massage. Like mm-hmm. make something you love. Order something that you love. Like watch whatever it is. Like I think it's so important. And I really loved seeing them do this with her. Yes. <laughs> but where's Gary Dordan? Like, y'all was just going to show him? In... He He's popping up soon. They had to get Aiden, I guess, back first. But he is he has to be popping up soon. Um. So next, Anthony is at work. And the workers are like, look, we can't dress like this in the winter. And he's like, um, the Hooter girls can do the same. So... I'm not having it. And then one of the the hotties, what are they called? I think they're called like bread boys or I, I don't even know. Did I take notes on this? <laughs> but <laughs> we don't like, call them the bread boys for now. The bread mm-hmm. boys. <laughs> the bread boys. Um, one of them just decides to take out a needle and go whoop right into the thigh and then goes back to like getting bread. And Anthony was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Um, I want this to be a no hormone zone and he has the audacity because I thought this was audacity quite honestly for him to be like, if any of y'all are on hormones, get out. And of course, of course, because this should, this needs to be a reminder for anyone who has unrealistic body expectations and we know the gay community has them. Of course all of these men are on hormones. Are you kidding me? I thought this was so outrageous. A, because this is not in Anthony's character. I thought his outrage should have been like, this is unsanitary. Like, don't be shooting up in my kitchen. Exactly. Not, like, who gives F, like, if you want to use hormones, if that's what you want to do, and be like a gym bro or whatever. But, like... I also don't think Anthony would care about anybody using hormones. Like, I just was so confused that they chose that direction to go. Like, just be like, no, like, don't be in my, like, kitchen with your medical supplies because, mm-hmm. no, the like, we'll get closed down by the Department of Health. Like, yeah, yeah. The issue. I think they just really needed him to be desperate for the rest of the storyline. So it's like, oh, my gosh, he doesn't have any delivery, guys. It's true. The, yes. the men... The, the men he had were specifically for gay men like mm-hmm. that that's their um their thing 
not technically muscle heads for like moms who are watching Drew Barrymore. Um, but he could have still kept his staff and still been like, I need someone specifically exactly. for this audience. This felt um, very bizarre. Charlotte, she, we find out she's running an Instagram for Rock and Richard Burton. Rock is getting popular. Their ad is like right there in front of school. And, you know, she's talking about all of this with LTW, but LTW is a little distracted because at the corner of her eye, she sees her baby being groped by little Baxter with her fresh hands. <laughs> so first of all, to touch on Charlie, Charlie needs a job. Charlie needs a job because Rocky and Lily don't, they're still her children, but they don't need her. <laughs> like no. she thinks they need her. So she needs a job. But I was LTW. So like, I thought I knew where their storyline was going to go. And I still think that's the earth undercurrent where we'll get there of the storyline. But it was very bold. Like, and I understand that I'm a millennial and Gen, Gen Z. And like, I am very like open with my cousins mm-hmm. and stuff. But, like, this is a teenage couple or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's the schoolyard at 3 p.m. It is bright and sunny. The sun is bearing down. This little girl basically has her hands down this boy's pants. And I'm just like, yes, this is what we do in this show. Like, to me, at least when I was that age, I had the courtesy of doing this in a dark AMC theater. Yeah. Uh, like, and it's also, like, like they live at, they live for it. They go to school at one of those schools where it's like K through 12. Yeah, so there's yeah, like yeah. kindergartners like stumbling around. Like, let's, you couldn't go around a corner to the Chipotle and do this? She kept saying it's three. It's three, three o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, honey, teenage hormones have no time. I didn't like Baxter because she was like, ooh, I love your purse. Like, she wants to be girlfriends with, with this woman. And it's like, no, this is. I thought, I thought LTW was annoyed the girl was white. I'll just put it out there right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. She definitely is. They don't say that, but she's clearly annoyed. But the girl's also very familiar with her in a way that Black children are not raised to be. Like, That's... they're very much like Miss, like, you know, such and such. Mm-hmm. She probably called that lady Lisa. Like LTW, I already think she don't does. like the girl. I think she, yeah, she actually does. It's, the girl is too familiar. Well, she's she too says familiar. Wesley. Maybe or something she says like Ms. that. Wesley. But I don't know. I don't like, know. It's, it is because she's white. A lot of this audacity is because she's white. And he's just like, yeah, Oblivious. we're going to go with it. And it's like, no. Miranda ignores Che's call. She's at home. It looks like she's taking like a BuzzFeed quiz or something about if she's queer or where she is, which is hilarious. I've never done those. Um, But yeah, so she's trying to figure it out. Uh, Next, Che is out um, walking and talking with Carrie. Um, They're like, is Miranda ghosting me? And, you know, Carrie's like, probably mm-hmm. like this is kind of how she handles things and she's like okay i don't need like a whole lecture but i do have her stuff which is such a tired trope for tv to do uh, first of all i would not believe miranda would leave anything there she wouldn't because she's very type a they could have just given it to carrie mm-hmm. um i also was confused as to why they were surprised that miranda was ignoring them like yeah you broke up with miranda why did yeah. you think they were going to have some type of camaraderie? At least not now. Like, maybe eventually mm-hmm. down the road. But I'm always very irritated with people who, like, in relationships, like, who want to continue befriending you or, like, being involved in your life. It's like, no, like, actually, mm-hmm. F you, you can't still have access to me. Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing that was part of their breakup scene, well, like, Che is literally like, yeah, we should end this so we could still be friends. And, like, I get it. But just like you said, there needs to be, like, a whole period. Like, Miranda's Mm -hmm. literally figuring out her own identity outside of you right now. Mm -hmm. So, like, you can chill. Real hard. Um, You weren't a good friend. You weren't a good friend to Miranda anyway. Like, you're actually terrible. No, because now this is really just about you um, having to Airbnb your home. Yeah. Because you got something that you could not afford. afford. Like, so Miranda asked Naya if she's a lesbian. <laughs> They're in a bookstore and just 
I don't know why she thinks Naya would know. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, Naya's like, you know what? You got to do the whole scientific method on this hoe and mm-hmm. test some things out. And so, but then Miranda hears a voice at the back of the bookshop and it turns out Amelia Carsey, which, okay, I don't, you probably don't know who this is, but my queer ass was like, is that ER Fightmaster? Like this, and that's a real name of a non-binary actor who has been on Shrill and has been on um, Grey's Anatomy. And ER Fightmaster looks exactly like this person. Um, so this it's not them. It's not them. It's not okay. Them. But yeah, it's definitely a different person. So this is who ER Fat Fightmaster is probably going to look like in a few years, and it's still good. Mm-hmm. It's still looking good. So I mean, this is a vi- first of all, when Naya and Miranda walk into this bookstore, it is dripping in Valentine's Day. There's yes. hearts like everywhere, like. And just like that, I want you to know what season it is, which I think is so funny because it's very different than Sex and the City, which never had clear time yeah. differentiations. Um, but there's uh, this person, like this this uh, voice actor or whatever, is reading Pride and Prejudice, and she sounds very sexy. And when, when Miranda peels back the curtain, like she's dressed in like this slick red suit. Like it's everything. Like it's very much giving me cute. It's very much giving like lusty, lusty for Miranda. I was like, yes, like I love this. This is this is the type of woman, this type of person. Like Steve was always a little bit haggard. Shay was always a little bit haggard. So I was like, this seems to be like a person who is Miranda's equal in a way of like someone having it together. It, or so it appears. As so it appears. My. I Like the hard turn that they did. I really. I was in a fantasy land. Because I was like. This me cute is going hard for no reason. Because uh, Miranda sees Amelia out front. First of all. <laughs> Miranda still has that baby gay energy. Where when she is like infatuated with the person. She is throwing all the compliments, all the I know your work and stuff. And I was like, oh, she's she's still bringing that baby gay energy to this. But, you know, Amelia, she was catching it. She was like, oh, what'd she say? You were, what was the flirtation? It was thing? because Miranda said that she ran listening to Amelia's yes. like, audio book or something, which is crazy. <laughs> was listening and running to Pride and Prejudice. Yeah. Um, and then Amelia says something back there, but it's it's very much giving. All of these. It kept me going or something like yes. that. And Amelia's like, I like the sound of that. And I was like, ah. <laughs> It was good. It was very good. The one, the one I would say that um, it's like, you could still tell like, this is this queer people are not this smooth. <laughs> like queer women are not this smooth. At, but like, I thought Amelia was a seasoned woman. Like, so she was used yeah. to like, and she's very fine. Like she's very attractive. Like she's yeah. very together. So it just, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was just like not ready for it. And I was just like <laughs> thinking of all the baby games and be like, I would never. <laughs> I mean, I would have fallen down a grate, but I'm also just a ridiculous person. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so, and to to be clear, also in the back room, while Amelia is wearing this red suit, all these ladies who are listening are dressed up in Jane Austen like era clothing. Yeah. So at the beginning, um, Amelia's like, Yeah, I noticed you. You were the only person there that <laughs> was like not in the costume. And it's like, Fair, fair. So um, later Miranda gushes about this interaction, tells Carrie, hey, maybe my type is just strong women. Mm -hmm. And they have this whole back and forth, which I love because I remember we talked a couple of episodes ago about like how it was really unfair that Miranda wasn't able to talk to Carrie about her love life in that Mm -hmm. way. And I was like, oh, well, maybe it's just because like, you know, like she knows Che and like it might be like awkward. So I was glad to, like, hear Carrie actually listen to her and, like, have real things to say versus just, like, moving on to the next conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Very fair. I I loved this, too. So Charlotte's at home, and she tells Harry, um, Lily is going to have F the boys night dinner party because Blake dumped her. 
I didn't know they had a relationship like that. She really made it sound like we just agreed to this. But apparently they had a whole relationship and he dumped her after she walked through the snow for his little D. And did they not even have sex? Did I did we talk did that was that disclosed? I think they did. My thing was like this like I get mother, like Charlie's a really good mother, but mm-hmm. you can't let your kids walk over you. And I think she's in this realm of letting, not necessarily Rock, because I I feel like Rock be having valid points in dealing with their mom. (laughs) But (laughs) Lily is like in this state of like walking over Charlotte, and I don't care for it. Like I feel like yes, you can have your F the voice party or whatever, but but Charlotte is then like pressing Harry to find Valentine's Day plans for them, and Harry's like we did we agreed years ago we're not doing this. It's ridiculous. We pay like eight hundred dollars to have a shitty dinner. Yeah. Like, it was already only a couple of days before Valentine's Day, so, like, all he could find was a 5.30 reservation. But yeah. it's, like, Charlotte is bending over backwards to appease Lily, and it's, like, no, like, have a real conversation with, with her, or let mm-hmm. her have her after boys party and you stay in your room. Like, I don't... What is this? Mm-hmm. I need to get out of the house energy. I don't get it. I don't get it either, because Lily, apparently, she got dumped by Blake, and then she also... Her original song was made fun of by the popular girls at school. So apparently she's going through it. And there's always still the added context that Lily is her adopted daughter. Like, I feel like there's, I I don't know. I, I would hope she has enough sensitivity to, like, keep that in mind and how to, like, handle Lily. Mm-hmm. And, like, she's, like, the only non-white person in this house. But I wonder, and the writers are probably not even thinking about this, but I do wonder if some of that guilt is playing into this. That's probably definitely true. I think Charlotte's probably aware enough, but we also, and I think like when she first adopted Lily, they were talking about like Lily's heritage and things like that, but that hasn't come up at all no. in, uh, in just like that this season or last. So. Well, except for Lily's song. Well, it's, no. Yes. Did she no, it was about Lily? being like privileged. It was about like, oh, I'm like, I have to be perfect. Or it was very much like, no, I don't yeah. know bullying, but the song was trash, girl. Like, I don't know why you played it. <laughs> but I'm glad you Where did you play it? Like, yeah. Maybe on, on like social you, media. Yeah. Yeah. But she's such an earnest little girl. I still love that about her. Like, ooh. They can keep Lily. I realized that, like, I I enjoy rock. Like, Mia rock. But that's that's my homie for real. Like, Lily. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Lily, Lily has a lot going through it. I, yes. I have compassion. I have compassion for the little artists. LTW and Herbert, they're, they're making jokes and everything about their Valentine's Day date. And then their junior comes in bold, excited. I don't know why. He, why did he think his parents would be excited about this? I don't know. Does he know his parents? I don't know, but he's like, oh, Baxter's parents got us a room or a suite in the Mandarin from Valentine's Day. Who was Baxter's parents? My thing is, the thing I love about agents like that, that they do well, is like, yes, Herbert and LTW have a coin. They're still very much Black people. Like, they're yeah. still very much Black parents. This boy came in a room like, oh, I'm about to just hang out with, you know, my white girlfriend in this sweet and I'm underage first of all anywhere in USA mostly you have to be 21 plus to, to get a suite or get any hotel room second of all I feel like it's just so they're gonna have sex their teenagers are gonna find ways to have sex if that's what they want to but this is such a dangerous kind of position to put your black child in like being around all anything could happen mm-hmm. like so I was glad they, they shut that thing down quickly yeah. Well, Herbert was and a little bit more reluctant, but... Yo, Herbert... Herbert was not on our side in this episode. It was wild. He decides, without not... Without speaking to his wife, to offer that they just go and stay at their apartment. Um, and they would leave for their dinner, I guess? LTW was like, are you out your mind when the boy walks away? And she's like, they're definitely going to try and have sex in my bed um, because this little girl don't have boundaries. And he's like, well, we don't own him, right? And like, 
tried to have like a standoff with that. It was very bizarre. My thing was like, I get her, I get Herbert being like, hey, like you're not going here. If you want company, you can have company here. But this whole like we got to get out of the house situation is crazy. First of yeah. all, yeah. I know that these are smaller, like compared to people who live in houses, like they just need our apartments, but they're a big apartment. They're huge. Um, I also don't understand LCW's obsession of like they're gonna fuck in my bed. Like the boy has a bed. Like <laughs> that was she a probably. Little weird. <laughs> Here's my thing. Here's my thing. I have never, ever, but I I have found out that some kids do that. Why? I don't know if it's is like... Is it bigger? Because the bed is bigger normally? Maybe. Maybe. I, I don't have that mentality. But when I found out like other kids were doing that, I was like... And maybe she... <laughs> Maybe she had a flashback to be like, that is what kids do. They like have zero boundaries sometimes and be doing that. And she was like, and I want my bed to only have me and my husband. It's yes. my bed. And this girl is out of control. The girl is out of control. But this is a bit too much even for me. No one is paying bills. <laughs> and honestly, <laughs> as a child free person, can we not <laughs> like that's my thing about just this whole season we have talked so much about these babies and sex and it's like yes these these characters that we love are parents but like don't other shows sometimes go blah 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 and you just see the kid walk yeah. past in the back like why are we going so hard in the paint about these kids sex lives i don't want I don't want it. I agree. I, I agree. I'm trying to be, you know, they're trying to be inclusive. Like... Mothers watch this show, obviously. Do A lot of the it? actors are mothers. I mean, like, these are the women who watch Sex in the City. Like, a lot of them are mothers. I would say, like, you know, okay. I don't know. Okay. If they I'm, were... more inter- I'm more interested in Richard Burton, personally. But that's personally, me. yes. <laughs> I'm like, let me know if Richard Burton's modeling. Charlotte, she's out in the bookstore. She gets a call from Anthony. He's frantic because he don't have a staff anymore, I guess. And she's like, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm an agent now. I'm a manager. I'm a manager. And I just scouted a delicious poet selling poems for $1 in this bookstore. So she... um approaches him and she's just like you want to make $300 and you're going to be on the Drew Barrymore show Charlotte is becoming the Martha Stewart version of Kris Jenner I secretly live for it despite the fact that it's very Karen-ish and chaotic interesting she totally needed to get back to having a job I did not see how she would come to that epiphany but we'll get there when we get there we will get there so Seema and Carrie, they're about to go for a massage. Um, and the lady is like, Oh, your couple's massage. I would have just let it rock because, like, who cares? I've seen titties before. Like, turn over on your bed and go to sleep while they rub on you. Truly. But Seema's like, We're not a couple. And then um, she's like, Well, you know, we're only doing couples. Like, it's Valentine's Day. And Carrie just wants to, like, hide in her skin. Like, the whole scene. Like, Sarah Jessica Parker's acting so natural, so lovely. I love it. Um, but yeah, Seema is like not having it. She's like, this is not all day. Mail is still being <laughs> delivered and everything. And single people still have rights. Now, we talk a lot about Seema possibly being the new stand-in for Samantha. But do you think Samantha would no. do this? No, Samantha would be like, okay, let's go. Samantha would have got on the same table as Carrie and not been worried about it. Yeah. I was confused because I was like, if it's just your girlfriend, like, why don't you just get a couple's massage? Like, you're on separate tables with separate masseuse. Like, you're just in mm-hmm. the same room. Like, who cares? Mm-hmm. But I think this was, like, a huge trigger for Seema. And I think we learn more about her background, like, being an Indian woman, like, having these expectations of family. And she's had to deal with years and years of Valentine's Day as a single woman. So I see how it triggered her. Mm-hmm. And Carrie is kind of, like, probably understanding that trigger in a certain way. And she's kind of, like, I'm, like, my stomach still hurts over this whole Aiden situation. Like, I kind of just want to disappear. Yes. Yeah, I think the character Seema, I love the character Seema. But I do want to point out 
the differences mm-hmm. with Seema and Samantha. She's also so, someone who wants a relationship. Yeah, like she's she actually does. seeking, and that's not Samantha at all. Yeah, I mean, she's not gonna bend over backwards. She's not Charlotte in that way. But yeah, she's she wants it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Charlotte, she's being a total stage mom because she's at a modeling agency. I'm gonna assume this is Brooklyn. I don't they know. They never say where this agency. It could be Brooklyn. It could be Jersey. It was not in Manhattan um, for sure at all, and um, she, or it could be Queens. Yes, yes. And she's just like they are making you wait too long. We left signs for this, and like Charlotte's making points. Honestly, mm-hmm. honestly, she's she like is. you have other appointments and stuff, but the way she goes up. About this was embarrassing and like she she Karen's like that's what she does we saw a full this. Karen a full-fledged Karen she just starts like she doesn't berate the person but she just she it's does. very human <laughs> she, she, she absolutely she tells does. them you're right because she tells them like we have a place to be this isn't even Manhattan and Rock is sitting there like Wishing they could vanish into the abyss. She was like, these other people aren't in oh, this yeah, room floor. And I was like, girl, girl, you don't know the resume of these other people. Sit on down. Sit on down somewhere. Because People she, don't like to wait, but no one is doing this to you on purpose. Like, nah, no, there's nah. nothing, no one's trying to aggrieve you in any way. Like, please. Yeah. So after all that, they go home. They did go to other places. Other places did like Rock. But when they got home, Rock was like, Mama, you're fired. Respectfully, you can have more time for your other client, Richard Bird. <laughs> and not only does Rock say that Charlotte is fired, they say, like, I don't even want to do this anymore. Yeah. Because Charlotte has sucked all the fun out of it. And I felt bad for Charlotte because she was really connecting with Rock through this modeling, but she mm-hmm. was doing way too much. So, you know, Charlotte, she's just sad, but you know, Lily's still having her F the boys party, whatever. Charlotte drops off some food. Lily don't want it. <laughs> so then she's like, well, I'm going to try these brownies that your little friend made. That's supposedly so much better. And she's like, ooh, this, this is good. And then she goes to the restaurant and she's venting at Harry and all of a sudden she feels weird. Did you know what was happening in this moment? I did. I knew exactly what was happening. So Charlotte and Harry get to this restaurant at 5.30 p.m., which is a ridiculous time to have dinner unless you're 4 or 85. Um, And Charlotte, because immediately your mouth does feel weird or you're high. Like (laughs) Charlotte's just like freaking out. She's First of all, she can't stop talking. Harry's like, I don't even want to be here at all. And she just is like, I think she's like, I think I'm having a stroke because she's like feeling everything. And poor Charlotte probably never had no reason in her life. Poor thing. Um, I wonder. I really do. I feel like she probably had a puff and like cried about it or something <laughs> <laughs> in college or something like right, that. Right. But Charlotte is very like straight laced. So mm-hmm. she's like high as a kite, but also like whatever the dose was, was not that high because she's very self-aware of what's going on. Yeah. And she knows enough to tell Harry, like, something is very wrong. I don't feel like myself. <laughs> and Harry, obviously, is freaking out. He's like, get my wife an ambulance immediately. Nah. Mm-hmm. And she's like, I can feel my blood. <laughs> yeah. Which you can't. And we've never gotten that I can feel your, hot, your blood or your brain. My favorite thing ever, which was like, first of all, they wouldn't let Harry ride in the back of the ambulance, which is, is not true in New York. Yeah, because I was ridden in the back of many of my and- life, and I was like, Harry, you're and the number one guy in this room. I love Harry, but the best thing ever, as the door was slamming, Charlotte screams to Harry, "If I die, let Carrie pick out my outfit," which I thought was <laughs> incredible. Oh my god! Yeah, Harry can't be in charge of that. No. No. Nah. So so yeah. Um she goes to the hospital. Unsurprising, the doctor's like, Oh, you have like high amounts of THC. People your age aren't meant for this life. And she was like, Oh, yeah. I guess I am high because of Lily's friend. And then she was like, What am I doing with my life? <laughs> um, I am going to go back to work. Yeah. 
because she needs some business to mind, man, because you don't got no business to mind. Yeah. So the thing about this, I was like, so in the state of New York, weed is legal. You know, you can get gummies. We have dispensaries and things now. Uh, why are these children doing this in her home? Again, I'm very liberal. That was the first thing in my mind. I was like, oh, so Lily's grounded forever. Yes. Like, this is not a pro... Like, you do... I don't do... I realize Gen Z is very different to us. Alpha, I don't even know them children yet. But, n- no. It's and it's to have it out, out in the open. Like, it was on a table, like a little, like a charcuterie board. Like, the bones. They were really acting like that was their home. So, LTW, she is dressed. She looked good. She's ready to go out on her Valentine's Day with Herbert. And he's like, all right, like, let's go. And she's like, one second, I'm going to take a picture of this booby-trapped bed. Because little Baxter, I don't know what little Baxter is going to do, but I'm going to know if she does it. So that's left there. Miranda, she gets dressed up. She's dressed to the nines. I love it. This is the nicest we've seen Miranda look since Sex in the City 2. When they yeah. have in those ridiculous garments in, du- in Dubai, which is really Morocco. Yeah, but Miranda looked really good, and I was so excited for her because you could tell that she was excited, and she wasn't about to let Chase stop no show. No, nah. Naya sees her out, and Miranda's like, "Oh, Amelia moved our date from the restaurant to her place," and she was like, "Oh, you okay with that?" Which should have been a flag, but I also know the excitement of going on your first date with a woman, so. Mm-hmm. She was like, I'm good. It's scandalous and I like it. (laughs) She likes it. I mean, Brenda's not looking for anything serious. She's trying to figure her stuff out, but she wants to fuck this woman. And she deserves to do. So she's like, you know, you know, I'm going to judge it up. And she's just like, she looks good. Hair is done. Nails done. Everything did. And um, she she makes her way over to Amelia's spot. She makes her way over to Amelia's. Um, meanwhile, Carrie goes to a restaurant. She's put in the back. She's put on this little two top situation and she's sitting there waiting for Aiden. Um, yeah, her phone even dies. She's there so long and she has to recharge it. So that's a whole thing. Um, meanwhile, Naya's doing exactly what she said, her neat evening. And she just, this is me. This is me single. This is me in a relationship. Home alone with my molten cake and a little wine and just living good, living Mm -hmm. good in peace. It's iconic. Um, Miranda, she goes to Amelia's again, still dressed like she's going out. And Amelia's place, when she opens this door, it's cramped. Apparently, she's filming in her kitchen. Um, which it's a it's a one it's a studio so Mm -hmm. it is what it is why would you invite someone to your place when it's like this is the biggest question of all um she says it was because she was last minute recording something but it's like then push the date back in time like go at nine instead of seven the thing for me was like i'm extremely type a right Mm -hmm. like miranda my house has to be clean before I go to sleep at night. So when you have a studio, I lived in a studio for eight years, things have to be put in their place or your house looks chaotic. Mm -hmm. Not only was her space disheveled and cramped, it was also kind of gross. Like her kitty litter box was just there. Like I don't open, that stuff smells really, really bad. Um, Most people now have closed kitty litter or they put it somewhere. She looks crazy. She looks like I'd be looking after I come out of like a 10 hour edit of some or, or writing something. If I was Miranda, I would have beat feet right back through the door where I had hints I can because I didn't look too good to be showing up. And it just seemed like, again, yes, this is supposed to be a hookup, but show a little bit of care. And okay, there's something about Miranda. Like they love doing this with her because I think it's like opposites. But it's like every person now that she gets paired with is not, doesn't have their ish together. Mm -mm. And like she tries to make concessions for them. But it's like, what would Miranda's like, would it be like, 
there can still be conflict with two people who have other things together. Like Carrie does it all the time. Like Seema, other characters get to do that all the time. Why can't Miranda? Miranda's 56 years old and she has to sit on this nasty bed of this woman's apartment while the woman goes and dries her sheets after asking her for quarters and she calls Carrie like and tells her what's going on essentially and Carrie's like you could also just leave and that's kind of like a light bulb moment for her yeah. which I really appreciate it because I think for film films in particular we're taught to like smooth things over and like sit but I'm telling you as a 30 something year old woman please leave Please yeah. leave. I don't care if you order your food. You can tell the waiter to pack it up for you. So it makes you uncomfortable. You don't like where you are. There's no, you're not winning a reward for making yourself stay in an uncomfortable situation. Yeah. Because the and moment I looked at that cat poo, I would have been like. <sighs> they kissed. They kissed. And then she backed in the kitty litter. And thank God it wasn't Miranda because Miranda was wearing high heels with her feet all out, but it was it was Amelia who steps back into it. And, but you know what was a great physical gag though? Is when she's talking about, oh yeah, we can like order in. And she's clapping the magazines in the litter. It was so down. nasty. For the queers, I was like, you know what? This bounce is a little bit out. <laughs> For all the dog queers and their mess that we got on the ultimatum, here's Here's the cat. Here's the cat lesbians. Because mm-hmm. a lot of them were like, how are there no cats in in the ultimatum? It was like, it's, it was only dog lesbians. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> Maybe next season. <laughs> yeah, but this is what we get when we get the cat queers. Um, so, so wild. But yes, leave, leave when you have that instinct. LTW and her husband comes home. She's looking at the bedroom. She's like, okay, maybe... Maybe Baxter got around some things or knew, but then they go into the closet. These two are in her closet. Baxter, after complimenting that yellow purse, she has that thing right there in her armpit. And she like, oh my goodness, LTW. I just want to take a picture for Instagram. Hope it's okay. And LTW is like, it's not okay, actually. This is my property. You can see yourself out. And we don't see the actor do this. But when she's walking away, you hear a huh. And it's like, I wish she would. (laughs) I could not believe this. Because first of all, this is not just LTW's um closet it's her office it's a cloth it's like a combination where she does her editing and stuff for her documentary this i believe was a loewe puzzle bag which is upwards of three thousand dollars um which the girl probably doesn't care about but the audacity not just of the girl but of herbert jr to like take this girl through his through his parents bedroom because her cloth is connected to their bedroom and be touching on his mama's th- like i could not I would have popped the girl in the mouth. The the girl got popped in her mouth. Like, I'm sorry. I really want to know if the little white boys at his school is doing all this. I could not believe it. I bet they weren't. I bet they weren't. I bet the little white girls didn't ask either. Never had the best lines he had for a minute. Because he's like, uh, the bed would be one thing, but her closet. He said something like that. And I was like, because LDW is a fashion girl in the same yeah. way that Carrie is. Carrie called Miranda still at the at the thing. I think we talked about Miranda's side, but we didn't talk about what Carrie's side right. of the combo. We didn't. So for the Miranda side of this combo, basically Carrie did ask, like, do you have to say? I thought this was great that Miranda said, you know. Dating still sucks, but 56 Miranda doesn't have to do what straight 30-something Miranda did. Mm -hmm. And I was like, love that for you. Love that for you. I think that's part of the coming out glow up, honestly. There's a lot of having to build up um, self-respect because the world in many ways will try to tear you down um, for being queer. So it's like, 
yeah, getting more self-respect and the more you come into your own just in general, hopefully you would have the confidence to be like, yeah, I'm not putting up with it no more. Sorry. Um, so Carrie does get a text from Aiden. Uh, apparently she was right next door. So they go out. They meet on the sidewalk. It's very... They let the moment linger for mm. a bit. They're just like looking at each other like, wow, this is really happening, I guess. Um, yeah. What did you think of the street part before we go in? I loved it. Like, I love they're they're in the wrong ad because they're paired. They're both waiting for each other in different restaurants. Like, I love the like I've been there where you see someone that you like had a whole life moment with, and it's still everything is still there, all the good, all the bad, like whatever it's there. I was distracted though because they dressed John Corbett up like Hannibal Lecter. Yo, <laughs> yo, the jacket though, the jacket with three buckets and he's a it tall looked like a man. straight jacket it looked like he had on a straight jacket a wild choice a wild he, he looks choice. really good but it was i was very distracted by this these fashions i don't i was wildly that. distracted like i come side to the red booth um aiden reveals that like he knew about john's death but you know he didn't think it was appropriate to reach out and he also read her book about losing John he called it sad beautiful um and Carrie was like yeah it was sad I wouldn't say it was beautiful I think you know I guess Aiden has had some questionable moments as we've talked about um but I think overall he's generally a decent guy so I appreciated Mm -hmm. him like reaching out not reaching out to her letting her reach out to him and it was like really nice. I still am apprehensive about all of this, knowing their history. He's not her guy. He no, never was. We see the flags already. I think we see it so much, but I'll I'll we'll talk about it once we get to the end end. Um, so they get into a cab, they head back to Carrie's place, Aiden assumes it's been all these years we can't possibly going back to that hell hole <laughs> east, 70, east yo, 73rd street yo when he got out that cab he said take me back i don't know like he he the trauma like john corbett you're acting you're acting like you could just see like he's like wait, can I not do this? Like, wait, did I lose my goddamn mind? It must have been, like, such a wild thing. So if you remember the last time Aiden was at Carrie's apartment, their relationship was over. She basically told him she couldn't marry him after he bought her apartment for her. She then later had to, like, beg her friends for money. He was literally breaking through the wall of the apartment next. He had bought that one to the extended. They were going to live there together. Yep. And he was, he immediately was like, listen, like I can be a decent person, but this is too much. Yeah. And then they decide, like Carrie tries to calm him down. She's like, oh, like I've like done some redecorating. I actually use my stove now occasionally. And he's Not like, enough. no. Not enough. You're still that old thing. Yeah. You're still that old thing. Cause why'd you crawl back here? Like, and she was like, he said there's it, a lot of bad is here. Yeah. And for her, it was like, it wasn't all bad. And it's like, Carrie, 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 you you dragged this man through hell, Carrie. Twice. Twice. <laughs> like, you can't, you can't tell him to look on the bright side. Like, what? Aiden said, he can't go into that apartment. Like, ever. And which is very interesting, because I think we have the same dynamics that play. Because notice, Carrie doesn't try to bend over backwards and convince him. She was going to let him go. She was like, oh, I understand. If it was big, she would have, like, moved (laughs) the next day. Exactly. But, but, so is this just going to be a one-night thing? That's fine if if that's what it is. But, like, there's clearly some deep, Deep residual issues that these two have to go like rub through if they're trying. And I'm I'm kind of glad about it. So I'm hoping that means we won't be seeing him. Yeah. Longer. Yeah. She said, like, she's done so much to him. It's very nice that the writers didn't forget that. Yes. Um, they very much addressed that. 
And in many ways, they're the same people. Mm -hmm. Uh, When he ends it saying, fuck it, like, New York has hotels. Like, it was so not romantic. And she was happy. And they were, I was like, these two dummies. Dummies. I hated the ending. I would have rather Dummies. them just parted ways and him saying like, like "I wish you the best." And yeah, I hated it. I hated. It. I thought it, it was threw, such that, a quick turnaround and everything. It threw the entire episode off for me. Oh, like it threw it off because I was like, I was like, oh, like I'm getting it. It just it didn't feel authentic to me. It yeah, would have been more authentic for like, him to kiss her on the forehead and leave or something like that. She's his big. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and so and then he's like, "Oh, I have so much trauma from like how you have treated me and everything." And where big did big really make a big like? Did he really atone for that after leaving on the wedding and everything? I don't know, but she took him back, and they got their she marriage. always takes him back. So like. I don't know. This can't. I, I, Carrie would have to change or just relent like yeah. Big did. Like, location has always been such an important part about um, Aiden and Carrie's relationship because it was all the whole where are we going to live mm-hmm. situation for a while. And then um, she just couldn't change for him then Mm -hmm. he had that freaking cabin out in the woods she hated that place and even had big there which i'm like what is happening they're not compatible they're just they never were no and the fact i think maybe i'm really reading into it but i think the fact that they were both right next door and were missing each other for like that 30 minutes was a sign of like, they've always been this. Yeah, They've always been at different places. Because <laughs> why did they even get back together the second time after she cheated? I don't remember. I think she saw him out with Steve or something like that. And Miranda was pregnant or maybe if that came after. I don't really remember, but they should have gotten back together anyway. It never no. made any sense. No. It's Bobo, Aiden, don't. Don't do it. Don't do it. If if Big hadn't a uh, collapse off his Peloton, we wouldn't even be o- o- dealing with this. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. She was not thinking of him. No. Oh, that's the episode. Oh, oh my God. I skipped the whole Che part, didn't I? Did I? What did Che do? Che found oh, yeah, dog che. with Carrie. Yeah. And she, okay, so Che finds his dog, this stray dog, and we find out that they used to work at a veterinary clinic. And they're offered their job back at the, it's like a veterinary or pa- some type of animal, whatever. Yeah, I was like, is this a shelter? Um, but yeah, I don't know. Um, so yeah, benefits, all that. And and yeah, so I guess that's what they're going to be doing for a second. Um, good for them. Oh, do we have a BB moment? Yes, what? I loved when... Uh, Naya was sitting by herself. Yes. She takes a bite of her soup. Like I loved it. Like I just I hate this narrative that of like single loneliness. And I, I don't think you're I don't think you have to be lonely if you're single. Like I think being a single can be very beautiful and it's a, a a way to thrive and grow and to really listen to what you want in your needs. So I love mm-hmm. that. I love it too. Um is it really petty of me that I'm going to say LTW taking that purse back and telling Baxter to leave? It was iconic, honestly. And it's it. what Baxter needed to hear because she had the most nerve. And she was she was very frank with her. She wasn't, she didn't sugarcoat anything with her. She said that she nope. doesn't have any boundaries. It, she, well, she was disrespectful. It's mm-hmm. just get off her house. Mm-hmm. And I was tired of the men acting like she was doing too much. So yeah, she got proven right. Do we have a chaotic bye moment of the episode? Uh, the kitty litter seemed chaotic. There was more lesbian than bye. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take that. Also, just like the nerve of Che being like, oh, like, is Miranda ignoring me? Yes. Yes, person. Miranda is ignoring you. Yeah. Absolutely. You barely acted like you wanted Miranda there with your stupid ass cameos anyway. My chaotic my chaotic 
bi moment or should I say queer moment is probably Miranda Miranda asking Naya of all people if she's a lesbian <laughs> just because like Naya was just, like yeah this is a Wendy's <laughs> like what yes, <laughs> yes. I, but I feel you I feel you and like queer people like we when we're getting to that place of like starting to self-realize but it almost feels like we need someone else's permission to identify Mm -hmm. and like usually if if you're a certain kind of queer like I I remember um when I was still in um my last relationship I was boohooing on the phone with one of my besties and just talking about how unhappy I was feeling and then she was just like baby girl you're queer <laughs> I was just like I'm like I don't think I want to do it with a man no more <laughs> yeah yeah I don't be wanting to do it with a man no more <laughs> So that felt real to me. That felt very mm-hmm. real. But it's like, yeah, Naya, that, Naya's not going to be stressed out over your sexuality. You get no. it together, Miranda. And she will. <laughs> I'm just glad that like Miranda has like clicked back into herself because it was just like, it was so sad because Miranda's such a good character. Like mm-hmm. I just hate it. And I get it. We all go through that, but it was taking too long. And Che, <laughs> mm. no. I have hope and faith for all of them. (laughs) So we'll just see. But this was a great episode. Um, Is there anything that you want to plug, Rami Day, Variety Writer? Um, No, but you can find me at A Word with Rami Day on the thread. (laughs) I don't know what Twitter is still called, but I'm about to delete my Twitter soon because it's chaotic. A Word with Rami Day on all of the... Them, them people's things that they, we pay for and let them yes. give us algorithms too. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, and my plugs is still please follow Black by Reality across all socials except for threads. We're not on threads yet. <laughs> um, and you know, like, yeah, listen to a, the podcast, check out the YouTube for that YouTube exclusive content. I've also been doing some, um, recaps with Rob has a website network so I talked about Too Hot to Handle the first set of episodes Hot Dummies on Islands so you can catch that once you um, start your binge and I more recently was on the crime scene podcast um, with Mari Forth and Sarah Carradine we talked about how to create a sex scandal on Max um three episodes it went by super quick and it was it was a good one it left me wanting more actually so yeah uh that's that's all hope you guys catch us next week bye